Hey guys, what's up? Brian Savage here with you. And uh, today we're back on the DIY kit from thefretwire.com. And we're going to do some work on prepping the neck. Now, uh, let's go over the neck in a little more detail. Um, I didn't do a whole lot of detail on it last time. Let me. Yeah, this will probably make for a little less light, a little less glare, probably a little better for this. But, um, anyway, let's see. Um, well, it is maple on maple. Uh, the frets have almost a, uh, I don't know if it's, tarnish because I ain't tried to clean I ain't listen to me I haven't tried to clean them up yet but I think that they're, they have almost a, a brassy look to them I'm sure that some of the compound in it I don't know how soft they are yet I haven't tried to file on them because uh, they're not sharp uh, there is however on where it is filled See how you can see there's a little bit of a dent right there where those fret tangs are. There's putty in them, um, but, you know, they just blip, 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 wipe it off the excess and let it go. And this one here, it's this one, that one especially. It's almost like it doesn't have any putty in it at all. So I will have to do that before I finish the fretboard. Um, another thing, I mentioned this before, it almost looks like it does now in the video, but it's not. I don't have the flat straight edge anymore out, sitting out here. But uh, this, where it fits on the neck pocket, was very crowned so much that I could hold it against the neck pocket and there was a large gap on either side. It was curved like that and it was mainly between the two screws that it was crowned. Uh, I took a little microplane, little little finger plane, microplane, whatever you want to call it. Took a couple shaves out of that, sanded it down nice and flat with a block. Checked it with flat, made sure I kept it flat all the way across, and didn't go any farther than what these edges already were. And uh, what you know, that was fairly easy. And you probably could get by with throwing finish on it and bolting it up and making it work. Um, it wasn't that bad of a crown just the same as you could probably finish this and have little dents and you'd barely even fill them but I am going to make sure that I fill those with the putty I, I've got some wood putty so that's not a big deal uh, second thing that I've got to address right here where this fretboard is sanded you can't tell it too much but to exaggerate it kinda goes along this line right here so it's actually a little closer to the nut there than on the edges it's hard to make out I understand uh, it's much more prominent to the eye um, and I've taken it off a little bit but I'm gonna go ahead and finish that out is another thing I'm going to do and uh, of course we're going to cut a shape in the headstock Excuse me. And uh, I kind of drew up on a piece of cardboard, uh, thin cardboard, you know, one ply stuff. I kind of drew up a shape that's almost fender esque. There's an actual fender, squire, but it's fender all the same. Fender shape. So it's kind of is, but kind of isn't. It's a little different. Not quite telly, not quite strat, not quite fender. And um, I already cut it out. And I actually, you probably won't be able to see it, but I did trace it out with a broken line. Okay. And the reason I did that was is I wasn't sure when I looked at it if it was going to look right with the string tree measuring up 
how is that going to come into it? You know, the shape compared to that with the string tree there. That's already a preset hole, and of course it's, you know, right. So, anyway, I wanted to make sure that when this string passed through here under the tree and came out here on this outside of the tuner, that I wasn't getting too close to that. Leaving myself some material. <clears throat> I also, whoop, sorry about that. I didn't want to make this rounded part too much of a cutback because that would be real hard to sand. And I also plan on taking I plan on using this router bit, and that is called a Roman OG, and it's a 532nd Roman OG. And what I plan on doing is, is I plan on starting about this point in the headstock, and as I come around and come down to this point, I'm going to go farther in. So another, uh, another way to think of it is, is on this it'll just be a little bit of a shoulder, the shoulder, and as it comes around it's going to go farther in and deeper that way. <clears throat> so it'll be uh, just basically a round over at the top and an extra round over at the top and as I go in depth wise down wise it's also going to go in farther that way and make more of a profile and that's the goal that's the plan I'm gonna to have to make some templates in order to do that with the router uh, it's going to be very 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 difficult to do that because I'm gonna to have to do it basically running my router straight actually be more happy tilted like this and run the router flat across it this way I'm of course exaggerating the angle there so that as I slide it forward it will dig deeper and as it digs deeper that of course is going to make the profile go in farther that way <clears throat> excuse me um, so and I'm happy with this so I'm going to go ahead and finish out the uh, outline of what I'm looking for Sorry, I bumped the camera again. Um, I drew this out and laid it on there and kind of looked at it, and then I ended up erasing it off and trimming some more. And the reason why is is because of the graining, and I know it's so hard to see because I have pooey lighting. There you can see the graining. And because you have all this long grain through here, I wanted to get to where that edge, when I make that route, it's, you know, it's really going to make this grain pop. Because, uh, I don't know if you haven't checked it out, hold on just a second. It's going to be kind of dull and bumpy because I haven't, uh, I'm still letting it set up between coats working on the neck. I'm going to dye. This is the body. Okay. So my plan is to dye the back, the front of the headstock, and the back of the neck dye it that blue and then you know have the fretboard and down the side of the fretboard where it's the maple on the maple I'll leave that maple revealed and dye all this the blue and then after I dye it then I'm going to route it so that the round will also be this maple showing through blonde 
with just what is not routed remaining blue to make that profile more prominent. Again, this is what I got up here, but I will make a test piece and probably have to run several test pieces to even see if I'm going to be able to do it on the router. I don't know. It might be one of those things where you'd have to do it by hand and, and hand carve it to get that kind of profile. But I'm going to try it, and if I make it work, I'll show you how I did it. <clears throat> Alright, so right now, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to get ready to go ahead and cut this out. And before I do that, I know that the next time that I mess with this fretboard is going to be after I do everything else. And the last thing I'll do is take this tape off and then clear coat. I'm not worried about hitting it there. Take this tape off and clear coat the entire neck fretboard and all over top where it's blue and dyed, all of that. Um, that's going to be the next time I have to touch it. So, and not till then. So, as I tape this off, I want to make sure I get it right on the line. I know this is probably boring, and I normally wouldn't even video me doing this, but I promised my wife that I would show all the stuff that I'm doing to this guitar that I haven't been showing. I showed her the body last night, and she says, did you show finishing that body? And I said, no, I didn't record finishing that body, baby. That'd be boring watching someone wipe something on it, and then wiping it off, and wiping it on, and wiping it off, and then wet sanding, and wiping on <clears throat> And she said, well, I think that's what you should do. And I said, everyone will think it's boring. She said, do it and find out. So I said, yes, ma'am. I want to keep my wife happy. So guess what I'm doing? I'm recording what I think's the boring stuff. If you think it's boring, please comment and let me know. If you think it's not boring and you want to see more of it, you can comment and let me know, but understand with every comment you're giving my wife more ammunition to prove. But once again, she's smarter than me. Exacto knives, sharp new blades and exacto knives and razor blades. Um, they're cheap. You can get cheap ones and they will do the job. This is not an expensive one. I think it's even stamped. Yes, unfortunately, it's stamped China at the bottom of it. And it looks, uh, yep, China. Um, but, you know, it works. It does the job, and when you are taping things off, there is nothing better than this. Nothing, 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 no other tool in my opinion when it comes to taping off guitars anyway. I mean, I'm sure if you do auto body work or something like that, there might be better tools but I have not found it because uh, I do guitars with it and it has served me well yeah I know
like right there, that'll be a pain in the tushy. You didn't have a very, very, very sharp knife. You can be very precise to where you don't touch the wood. It's so sharp when you drag it across, you can feel it just cut the tape. It just doesn't touch the wood. You, uh, if you have a big knife or you're using a big blade or trying to hold a blade, you got to squeeze it so tight that, for me, with all these calluses from playing these things, um, and finger picking and whatnot, I, I can't, I don't feel it as well. And I want to feel when I'm just through the tape and not touching the wood. I don't want to put a line in the wood. Again, this tape's going to be on here a while, so if you're wondering why I'm taking the extra time to cut it all off even and all that kind of stuff, that's going to be unnecessary. There we go. Is because, again, it's going to be on here a while, and I want it to protect it. So it stays on this ride until it's come to a complete stop. All right, now we've traced this out, and I'm going to use for this cut a jigsaw for this little bit of this little corner right here. Now that you can see it a little better, I've drawn on there. I'm kind of looking at it, and I'm wondering. It looks almost a little bulbous. But that's going to change how it's, I don't know, a little funky looking there. If I left that profile just like that, I don't think I'd like it because it comes out too far here. But where I'm going to do that sweep, it's going to take a lot and make this, this more of a regular rounded line. Because uh, that's going to be the blue dyed and this is going to be just the uh, regular straight maple showing and I believe this maple is going to take that dye really, really well. And I'm going to try it really thick. Uh, the back of the neck, I'm going to spray it satin. The fretboard and the headstock, I'm going to uh, uh, gloss. Glossy gloss it. But, uh, again, uh, I'll do everything except do the gloss. I'll even do the satin on the back. And then I'll remove the tape so that... <clears throat> Excuse me, I don't know what's up with me. So that this edge here of where the maple meets the maple, this will be shiny and this part of it will be the uh, matte finish. I like that satin finish, matte finish on the neck. I think it feels faster than uh, thick clear lacquer. Alright, now... I'm going to check it again on my template. I like, I like. And I've got it penciled. Hang on just a second. So if I need to line my template up from the back, I'll be able to. I'm going to transfer this line transfer that line so now if I need to <clears throat> excuse me listen to me again I can lay my template in right there just clears the edges against the back now I know I'm lined up
just in case I need to flip it over. Which I shouldn't. All right. Now that we got that done, put the square back. <laughs> and I'm going to use this pin. Right here, I'm actually going to use on this very first piece coming in here. Again, I'm going to use a sander to make this line. So I want that to stay very square. That's going to be hard to keep square and not want to round over. Take my same scalpel and I'm just going to start a score line. Just start a score line. And that is going to help me so much know whenever I get to this edge with that sander because that score line will peel away and I can stop and hand sand the rest so it gives it a little bit of radius. Which I like the little bit of radius you get with a hand sand when you go around the edge instead of a very flat curve. I think it just makes it feel more comfortable. It makes it take... I find if you round the edges over just a little bit, if it, if, if it curves around... We also, when you finish, it lets a little more finish build up right at the edges. And whenever you go to wet sand it, you don't have as many uneven surfaces, ripples, or sand throughs at the corners, burn throughs, whatever you want to call them. Some people say that you shouldn't do that. You should machine it exact, you know, and have 90 degree angles. And then, you know, when you spray your finish on and da 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 da, -da. Uh, I don't know. I'm just telling you what I like. Um, everybody can do it their own way, I guess. That's the beauty. That's why you bought this, right? That's why you didn't just go buy some pre-manufactured Chinese guitars. Because it's the joy of this kind of stuff that... Uh, you like and you like the challenge if you're like me I like the challenge of doing this but I really like the the um, freedom I'm completely open to you know go any direction I want and there's so many different directions you can go even with a kit like this that's pre-drilled you know um, everything's pre-drilled, the tuners, the, the string trees, the bridge, um, the, everything. You don't have to have, um, uh, as far as, I can't think, uh, there's not a drill bit one you need. You don't need a drill at all. Everything's pre-drilled for you. That, that's one of the great things about this kit. I think it's great for first-timers, first-time builders. I believe that everyone that is looking to become someone who builds guitars or uh, <clears throat> instruments. Uh, I had a grandfather that built dulcimers and uh, his first couple were flops. Um, I guess you could call them playable but it doesn't take much to make a dulcimer playable but uh, resonant or have a good sound or tone it did not, not even remotely. And uh, he'd be the first to admit it, but he learned. And it's the same way with these instruments, any instrument, I think, or anything you do. You learn as you go. My preferred way to build a guitar now is from raw blocks of wood that are dry. Good and dry. Good and dry. Uh, I like walnut. It's my favorite to work in. I find it very predictable. I've worked in it a lot, so I know how to read the wood, the grain, those kind of things. Know when, when is when when you're starting from raw. But if you've never done it before, don't try to do that. It'll come out bad. And the first time you build one of these, it's probably not going to come out that great either. You're probably not going to 
come out anywhere near the product that you thought you were. Nowhere near it. Okay. Um, that's why I say again, this is great for first time builders because the stuff that you mess up that causes you to have to start over from scratch. Get, get these screws wrong. Get this pocket routed wrong. Route these or cut those screw holes wrong. Where the uh, bridge goes, get those screws holes alignment off. Not know how to measure out for those things. Not how to make templates for those things. Even if you buy pre-made templates and you're using raw wood, you got to know how to line that jazz up, right? So that's why I'm saying you have to, have to, have to, have to, have to be, you know, flexible in some ways, and in some ways the things have to go a certain way. By the way, look how well I got that to fit now. You can almost pick it up by it. That was loose as a goose when we started. Oh, I meant to put the body up, put the neck up. Alrighty, so next step cut, cut this out, sand this off, sand this smooth. I'm going to sand it by putting a drum. Put this drum in my drill press, bring the bench up to where it's flat against it, put this in it flat against, turn it, like use it like a spindle sander basically. I don't have a spindle sander, but I do have a small drill press. And uh, it's a little skill, 8 inch drill press. They're pretty cheap you can get them about anywhere but honestly you could also do that same thing with a hand drill uh, take a drill put that in it and get these radiuses that way I got several different sizes of those sanders that I'm gonna get it done after I take a jigsaw and uh, clamp this baby down and jigsaw it out then I'm gonna use the sanders so uh, won't waste your time with that. Heck, we're almost a half hour of me babbling anyway. Again, taped up the fretboard, show you where I came up with this and how I came up with that, and some things to look for um, when doing the neck. Um, next video is, well, I'll tell you what, the next video is going to be after I cut this out and I show another prep step I do. In how I clean, you got to clean these up, clean those up like I did the body, in that too, it was kind of fuzzy, anyway, it's so hot in the garage right now, <laughs> but I love it, share the music, share the love, peace out.